Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on Food Chain TV. Today I am making a creamy, delicious fettuccine alfredo dish. You do not want to miss this recipe. Let's get right into it and get it started. So follow along. First thing we're going to do is we have our chicken. Now, a chicken breast dries out really quickly, as you know. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to butterfly it, and I'm actually double butterflying it, okay? So I want to get it as thin as I possibly can so that it cooks really quickly and I don't dry it out. So check this out. Look, almost paper thin. These are going to cook in like literally under five minutes, okay? Now, if you don't have the knife skills to do this and you don't want to because you're afraid you're going to cut yourself or whatever, it's totally fine. All you need for this recipe is cooked chicken breast. So I don't care how you do it. If you get your neighbor to do it, if you go buy it at the store pre-cooked, if you grill it, fry it, boil it, poach it, whatever. As long as you have cooked chicken breasts, we'll be able to do this recipe. Okay, so I have all my butterfly chicken breasts laid out here. And before I put them in the pan, I'm just going to season them with a little bit of adobo seasoning. That's my preference. If you guys want to do just like salt and pepper, totally fine. Okay, but I love my adobo seasoning. I use it on almost everything. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of olive oil and we're going to rub that into the chicken breast. And not only is that going to make them taste really good, it's also going to make them cook really quickly when we put it in the hot pan. Now this is fettuccine alfredo. So I'm just going to mention that we will need cooked fettuccine pasta. And I'm not going to show you how because I think everybody knows how to cook pasta. So just have some cooked fettuccine set aside for this recipe. All right, now back to chicken cookery. So I'm going to just pan fry these chicken breasts. They're going to take like maybe three minutes on the first side and then probably two minutes on the other side. They're going to cook really, really quickly uh, because I cut them so thin. But like I mentioned before, if you have pre-cooked chicken breasts, if you want to grill it, pan fry it, whatever you want to do, as long as we end up with some nice cooked chicken, this recipe will work out just fine. All right, so I flipped it over. It took three minutes on one side and two minutes on the other side. And now I'm just going to put it on a plate, set it aside, and we'll start working on our sauce. All right, some onion, kachow, and I have a whole bunch of garlic. Pop, there we go. How do you like that for special effects? Now, see all these leftover crispy bits on the pan? That's called the fond, and you don't want to wash that because all that fond is going to add so much more flavor to our sauce once we cook it into uh, a liquid. So leave it on there, add a little bit of olive oil, and we're going to start with our onions. This is just one onion, diced, and I'm just going to cook it till it gets nice and golden brown. And then after that, I'm going to add my garlic. And here's the onions frying nicely. And I've only cooked these for like another seven minutes till they got nice and golden brown. And now I'm going to add the rest of the garlic. Now, from this point, you don't want to let that garlic burn, so you want to keep stirring it around. And I'm only going to cook it for like another 15 seconds or so till I start adding my wet ingredients. Now, I'm using half and half because it only has 18% fat, whereas heavy cream has like 35% fat. So I want to keep this sauce like kind of light, okay? And you don't need to use full fat heavy whipping cream. You can just use half and half and it'll turn out beautiful and silky and very tasty. My next ingredient is some chicken bouillon, which gives it a nice base umami flavor. You probably won't even notice it's in there, but you will notice if it's not in there. I'm also going to add a little bit of sea salt. All right, so I'm going to whisk this all together, and then I'm going to give it a little taste just to make sure that we have enough salt in there. And nope, this needs a little more, so I'm going to add another tablespoon or so of salt in there. And now I'll show you how we're going to thicken this. Okay, now we're going to make a quick root. So what we're going to do is get some flour. And this is like the easiest roux that I know. Okay, this is what I call a cheater's roux. And you basically take a whole bunch of flour. And you put just enough vegetable oil to make it into a thick paste. Okay, just like that. If it's too runny, then you just add more flour. And if it's too thick, you just add more oil. But you should get to, to some sort of thick paste, something like maybe the consistency of pancake batter or toothpaste. I think we all know what toothpaste looks like. Okay, just like that. 
that's a little, that's like maybe 5% too runny. So I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of flour here. There we go. That's the perfect consistency. And now we have a roux. And this roux will thicken any liquid that is simmering, just like I'll show you in this recipe. So now that our sauce is simmering, we're going to add a little bit of roux at a time, and we're going to whisk it in there. And you don't want to add too much at one time because you don't want to over thicken it. So just do a little bit at a time, whisk it, take a look at the sauce, see how it's going. We're going to add a little more roux and whisk it in there. Now remember that the liquid has to be simmering. It has to be pretty hot at this point, or otherwise the roux won't work. Okay, so just keep going. Keep looking at it. Okay, we're going to add a little more roux. And there we go. Adding a little more roux just till it's perfect. All right. Now you can stick a little spoon in there and see what the consistency is. It coats the spoon nicely, so that's the consistency we want. A nice, thick sauce. All right, now this is flour, so flour is a raw food, so we're going to have to cook it out for another five minutes. Okay, remember that. Cook your flour out for at least five minutes. Okay, so we're just going to turn this down to like number two on the stove and just simmer it for a few minutes. While I do that, I'm going to add some fresh black pepper. Look at that nice silky sauce, all simmered. And now it's been five minutes and we're ready to add the pasta. I always like to put the pasta in the pot and sort of stir it all together. That way you don't have to do that when you serve it on the plate. All the pasta is covered. And this is a really nice dinner. My kids love it. My wife loves it. And who doesn't like a nice plate of chicken fettuccine pasta? And now that you know how to make this sauce, you can use it on all sorts of things. It goes with chicken. You can use it with fish. It's a really versatile, white, creamy sauce. And over here, I'm adding some of that chopped up chicken that we made earlier, sprinkling it with some nice, fresh parsley. And uh, let me tell you guys, this is one of those dishes you have to try making at home. You don't have to go to a restaurant with these little caramelized onions you put in there. It's going to have this sweet little taste and the flavor is going to be amazing. And I think you guys are going to enjoy this recipe when you try it yourselves. So let me know in the comments below what you think of my chicken fettuccine pasta alfredo. And, uh, and I hope that you have a lot of fun making it. Uh, I know I'm going to have a lot of fun eating it. So thank you guys very much for watching my channel and for supporting what I do. Please do not forget to hit that subscribe button. The more subscriptions that I get from you, the more time that I can spend making videos like these just for you. So thank you guys very much. And until next time, this is Christian saying, I'm going to go eat a lot of pasta right now. <laughs>